Can you just summarise the, the problem that you've identified so far, which is you know, the, these two gaps? Okay, well, in, as I understand it in education, um, in this country anyway, you have the um, philosophers, so the sort of Dewey material, um, you know, right back to Aristotle, you've got the, the Charlotte Mason stuff um, in a Montessori, all the, all the philosophy material, the, the theoreticians, and then you have the practitioners, and actually there is a, a gap um, it's very hard to get the two to talk to each other. Um, actually, what happens in schools is usually what, what kind of works. It's quite pragmatic. Uh, and the national curriculum is, is a bit kind of a, it's a, it's a bit of a mess. It's not really a well thought through from first principles kind of thing. Um, with the biblical material, you've, you've got another problem in that the biblical world was so alien um, to our world today. I mean, that's, that's the case anyway in a lot of areas. Um, but particularly in education, there were um, no schools in, in sort of early Old Testament times. That, that changed a bit, um, particularly in the New Testament period. But there were, you know, th there wasn't such a, a role for education as we would understand it um, when it came to, um, you know, c community of maybe 100, 150 who uh, were subsistence farmers. You know, what does education mean in that setting? Um, so you have this this real gulf between. Um, biblical theory of education and how we can possibly apply it today and actually the, the Christian schools um, there is there's quite a wide variety even within the term Christian school mm -hmm. um, different uh, approaches um, how missional they are how inclusive they are and, and really even the, the values how much um, you know God has even uh, is even mentioned um, uh, uh, but uh, e even apart from that a Christian school you know what is actually Christian about it in, mm -hmm. uh, from, from the point of view of biblical first principles? Well, it's very hard to say a lot of the time. I mean, a lot of the time a Christian school is just a school that has a bit of Christianity bolted on in some way. It's very hard to say, you know, at its core, how is this really a Christian school? What's qualitatively different about it? Um, so that's one of the problems we've had. Um, so when it comes to understanding the Bible and figuring out how to apply it, uh, in, in, this, in the area of schools, I think language of relationships is quite a useful way of uh, sifting the material there and um, finding out a way to uh, apply sort of the underlying principles because obviously, you know, there is nothing in the Bible about classroom sizes or discipline um, or syllabus, really. Um, you know, how, how, do you, how do you get from the first millennium, second millennium, even BC world of the Bible to 21st century education in, in the West. Well, it's kind of tricky. You need mm. something, um, something there to kind of guide you. Yeah. So the the relational school idea. Yeah. Um, you say it can it can draw out because it, it's taking the discussion in a sense about uh, a, a Christian approach to education up to the level of of. Uh, you know, key key relationships. I mean, what what do you think are? I mean, you've done a, you've done a, s a study initially on the role of parents. Yeah. Um, um, okay. So uh, one thing you can tell from the Bible is that parenting is absolutely key in education. So Deuteronomy six, that's the kind of classic um, classic text, and it's it's often used, um, particularly in America, to justify homeschooling because mm -hmm. it's um, it's a command to parents to teach your children these commandments and you know repeat them on the road when you get up when you go to sleep um, you know the parents are clearly supposed to teach their children Torah um, you know that's that's kind of what education seems to have been in, in Deuteronomy um, so parents are seen as absolutely key and, and in, in any case parenting is is um, you know family relationships and the parent-child relationship is absolutely fundamental in the Bible so Parents are responsible for, for discipline, you know, children are to honour their father and mother. And parents are given the ultimate responsibility for educating. That's something that's quite interesting. And you can apply that and I would possibly slightly controversially argue misapply that and say that the only valid form of schooling is homeschooling. Um, I don't think I don't think that's valid. Mm. Um, what you can say, and this is where the bridge of relational language comes in is that the relationship between parent and child is the most fundamental 
an important relationship when it comes to educating even at school. So what's a relational school? It's not a school where the parent dumps their child at the gates at seven in the morning and you have wraparound care, the child has breakfast there, they go through school, they have their after school clubs and really it's a kind of school plus glorified daycare and then yeah. they go home at the end of the evening and uh, you know parents are so busy and stressed that uh, they don't really eat together and they don't get read any bedtime stories, there's very little time spent there and the kid goes off to bed and that's it, thank you very much and then repeat and mm -hmm. nauseam. So um, a relational school is one that involves parents because the Bible rightly sees the parents as um, more important, I think, than even um, even teachers, you know, formal professional teachers for education. So, I mean, this is this is backed up with all kinds of um, psychological studies. Anyway, you know, if you if you don't do your job as parents, by the time the child gets to school, you've pretty much got no hope. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're you're really fighting uh, an uphill struggle by that stage. So, um, yeah, a, a relational school, I think, for one, is one that involves parents as much as is possible. Obviously, in many cases, that isn't possible, but it's one that does not uh, undervalue um, the relationship between parent and child because that's, that's going to make more difference than, I think, anything else. When you think about it, the amount of time a child spends at school, um, what is it, I don't know, 15% maybe of their time? Um, yeah. maybe slightly mm -hmm. more as they go through secondary school you know when you count holidays weekends mm -hmm. far more time is spent at home or elsewhere mm -hmm. on that on those grounds alone that's a really small proportion of time to be doing all of your education and then, then there's of course a question about what education is whether it is technical education the kind of you know nuts and bolts of, of mathematics um, languages whatever or whether there is more of a, a moral education there. And the two obviously go together because it's, you, you really can't teach anything outside of that framework, that moral framework. Mm. Um, but it does mean that if, the, if, you, if you're not teaching a child those moral values um, at school and they're not getting them at home... It's well, no wonder that... Yeah. 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 Um, so that's just one example is, uh, I think, a relational school is a school that fundamentally involves the parents as much as is possible. Mm. Um, how you go about that in practice is another question, but mm. Mm. that's that's a principle you can pull straight from the Bible, right from Deuteronomy 6, and, and work through. Mm. Parents have ultimate responsibility um, for their children's education. Okay, so we need professionals to do the educating because actually education now is so um, complex and far-reaching um, that you can't expect parents to do it all, and obviously our culture society is very... Um, very different, um, so work patterns are different and mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, the responsibility ultimately yeah, lies doesn't shift from the parents. parents. You can't the school, yeah. dump a child at school, yes. and that's that. Education is the teacher's job. Mm -hmm. That's not really um, that's not really valid. Mm -hmm. um, so, what scope do you think there is for for more research? You know, in the biblical. You know, what, how much more do you think there is that could be done that's not been done already? It is, it is very difficult. I don't think there's been a, a huge amount. Um, and there's a lot about Christian education and, and sort of biblical principles, I guess, but I don't think anything really... There, there is no piece of work, as far as we can tell from the people we've asked, that starts with biblical principles and works right through to a, a school. That's very, very difficult to, to do. Mm -hmm. um, hence, I think that a lot of homeschoolers and say, oh, Deuteronomy 6, this is what we're supposed to be doing, and that's what they do. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's a piece of work that actually follows it right through, partly because of, the obviously, the, the difficulties involved um, mm -hmm. of, of various sorts. Mm -hmm. So I think there is there is some scope for that, um, but I think it's got to be it's got to be a fairly well-defined project, and I think you need some kind of um, methodology like, uh, you know, language of relationships and so on. Um, and you probably want some experts and you know practitioners as well to say, well, actually, you just can't do that, yeah, or yeah. this is how you might go about it. Mm. Um, because uh, from my perspective, I, I'm a biblical researcher, but I don't know a lot about education. I've obviously been through education, but you you know you'd need teachers and, and educationalists um, to give you some 
uh, feedback and other, other points of view about how you might apply those principles, I think. So just in, in terms of um, you know, the parenting one, how do you do that in practice? Mm. could give you some suggestions, but then there are, you know, parents would know better. Um, mm. I'm not a parent of school-aged children. Um, teachers will know how parents tend to interact. It might be different in different schools. Um, I can see that, you know, in, in London with a lot of very busy professional parents, um, you might have a different situation than somewhere else where actually parents have more uh, time to yes, engage. Yes, <coughs> um, So uh, I think it'll it'll be a bit of a kind of courses for courses thing in some ways. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you might have a set of principles and how has that worked out in this school, maybe. Mm. Okay, that's great. Thanks, Guy. Fair enough.